Hi neighbor, welcome to Wild Homestead Living. I'm Kevin. And I'm Julie. And today we're going to introduce you to the cottonwood tree and give you a recipe you can make from its buds. Let's get started. Cottonwood trees can be found all over the world and they are in the same family as willow and aspen trees. They get their name from the fluffy white cotton that surrounds their seeds in the spring, which can look like soap suds or snowdrifts. My favorite part about cottonwoods is the intoxicating scent that comes from their buds. Cottonwoods are the largest species in their family. The black cottonwoods in our area top out at around 150 feet tall. They can be identified by the gray furrowed bark and their heart-shaped leaves, which vary in size from smaller ones like this to large leaves about the size of a dinner plate. Cottonwood trees love water. And as you can tell, in the Pacific Northwest, we get a lot of it. But even if you don't get this kind of precipitation, you can find cottonwood trees in riparian zones wherever you live, which is the area between dry land and a body of water, like a lake or a river. Cottonwoods are important wildlife trees. Standing cottonwood forests provide cover for larger animals. For instance, on this property, we know deer, bobcats, and coyotes, to name a few, roam these woods. Even small animals, as small as bees, will use resin from the cottonwood buds to line their hives, which helps prevent decay. Cottonwoods grow fast, and they don't live very long as far as trees are concerned. By the time they're about 80 to 100 years, they're at the end of their expected life and they start to die off. At that point, you have what's behind me here, which is a standing piece of dead wood known as a snag. Now, snags are important for a number of wildlife. Often woodpeckers are the first to take advantage of them, making cavities that they can nest in. And then we have animals that come and take advantage after the woodpeckers is le have left, like flying squirrels, owl species. If the cavity's big enough, a raccoon may even find it a, a welcoming home. So these forests are important for a wide variety of animals. Human beings have been using cottonwood trees for many purposes for a really long time. Where we live is the traditional lands of the Coast Salish and Snoqualmie people, and they've been using the cottonwood since time immemorial to make medicines for lung issues and to treat cuts and bruises, as well as as an addition for paints and even as a glue. Commercial uses for cottonwood include making plywood and paper. The, sh the pulp has short fibers that mesh together very well. So late winter and early spring is a great time to harvest the cottonwood buds. They're starting to swell, but they haven't gotten really sticky and gooey and messy yet. If you're harvesting from a live tree or any live plant, you want to make sure that you're using ethical foraging practices, which is usually harvesting no more than a quarter to a third of the area that you can see. For us, and the reason that we're talking to you today about cottonwood, is we recently had a storm where this big limb came down that's full of cottonwood buds. So normally we'd be really careful about not harvesting too many from a live tree, but since this piece is already on the ground and it's just gonna decompose, we're gonna go ahead and harvest as many of these buds as we can. I'm gonna be harvesting them just by snapping them off like this, it's very simple, and I'm going to collect about half a mason jar full of them today. Okay, so now we've come inside, we've got our half a jar of cottonwood buds, we have opal here to assist us in making our recipe for the balm of Gilead, which is really just a fancy name for oil that's been infused with the cottonwood buds. This is a recipe I got many years ago from my good friend John Gallagher over at Learning Herbs. And if you're interested in these kinds of recipes and wildcrafting, I highly encourage you to go check them out at learningherbs.com. Along with the cottonwood buds, they have a few other items that we're going to use, including this plate, a skewer, Cat is optional. Need some olive oil, a metal ring, or you could use a plastic ring as long as it's open on the top, and then a piece of cheesecloth or other type of fabric. So we're gonna take our mason jar of cottonwood buds on top of the plate, and then we're going to pour the olive oil in. And we're gonna pour it until it reaches just above the buds. 
thin. We're going to give it a good stir. Make sure it's all mixed in there. And we're going to put the cloth in place with the ring. Like so. Now the reason we have so much headroom or space in the jar is because these buds can absorb the oil and they can expand and the plate is there just in case we didn't leave enough room. And if it expands over, it will catch the extra. So now we've got the jar all set. I've labeled it with what is in here as well as the date I made it. And we're gonna set this aside in our pantry and every day I'll come through and I'll stir it really well. And we'll stir it every day for anywhere from a couple weeks to a couple months until we feel like the oil is very well infused. And then we'll strain it out. We'll put the extra cottonwood buds that are left over in our compost pile. And we'll use the oil itself for things like cuts and bruises. It's a really nice pain reliever. So this oil, once it's all finished, will last about two years if we keep it in a cool, dry, and dark place. If you like learning about nature and homesteading, I encourage you to head over to wildhomesteadliving.com and sign up for our newsletter. We send out videos like this and helpful tips on a regular basis. And there you go. That is a little bit about the cottonwood tree and a recipe that you can make from it. We hope that you enjoyed learning about this wild neighbor. See you next time. Thanks for watching.